guys, it's Inka. Welcome back to my channel. Things have been pretty busy lately, lots of exciting things coming up, but for today, I wanted to share with you all my favorite dumpling recipe. And by favorite, I mean it's really just my family's dumpling recipe. As much as I love dumplings outside, to me, this is the dumpling recipe that I will always crave the most. The version I'll be making today is what we consider our family classic. It's basically just pork and cabbage dumplings. I've made these so many times and they've always been a crowd favorite. So hopefully today you guys will be able to enjoy it too and make it yourself at home. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing I usually do is to make the filling and I have some pork here, which we will then season with a bunch of things in terms of vegetables. I also have some ginger, some scallions, a little bit of cilantro, and of course we have the cabbage, which I actually don't really know what the English term for this is. I just call it like Chinese cabbage. But in Taiwan, we call it gao li te. It's used to make both dumplings and bao fillings. It's like slightly sweeter than your regular cabbage. You can totally just use your normal grocery store cabbage. I just wanted to show you guys how big this was. So going back to the pork filling, the first thing I usually do is to add some salt as well as some water into our pork. And go ahead and stir it. And even though it feels like it might not be critical, it is actually important to keep stirring in the same direction. This actually helps the pork kind of lock in the moisture we're trying to give it and it makes the pork become a lot more tender. This is definitely a trick that I learned from my mom. She also made me do it when we were doing the bao video together. I'm also using chopsticks because that's how my mom's always done it. Pretty sure you don't have to if you don't want to, but it's also pretty cool. It's becoming stickier now. Next thing I like to do is to add some ginger. This really helps kind of neutralize the porky, meaty smell. Most of the time we actually just chop it up, but I bought this little greater thing when I was in Japan. I've been using this to kind of grate my ginger whenever I need ginger in my recipes. I'm gonna just go ahead and add that in and mix it together. Instantly it smells so much better. Nice, nice, nice. This is when I like to add in a bunch of my seasonings. Usually we just eyeball things like most recipes we have at home, but today I'm gonna try and measure it out. A little bit of rice wine for the flavor. Soy sauce. Can I finish all this today? Yes. The satisfaction of knowing that you have finished your bottle of soy sauce. There's more, of course. Always stock up in soy sauce. A little bit of sweetness to balance it out. Yes, sugar. Some sesame oil. Lots of flavors going in here. It smells so good. This practice of me smelling things is also because my mom always says like, you know, how it's going to taste like, you know how salty it's gonna be just from smelling it, so that's kind of how I eyeball it. Also adding a little bit of white pepper, give it a good mix again. It's getting like clumpier and stickier. Hmm, I think it needs a little bit more soy sauce. Hmm, gonna go back to doing a little bit of chopping for our scallions and our cilantro. I love really going ham on scallions. As you guys might have noticed with how much scallions I put in my scallion pancake, I personally love cilantro. So I'm curious to know how many of you actually don't like cilantro. If so, you can totally take this part out. Adding all these veggies in there now. Starting to look really good. Oh, once you add the scallions, it just smells amazing. This is the smell I know. Because of how often we've done this, it's like, sometimes you just know. By smelling it, you just know like, this is it. Last thing we wanna do is just add in a little bit of vegetable oil. Final mix. So this is definitely the kind of texture you're gonna want. It's like very ooey gooey. So now that all of this has been combined, usually we just like to chill it in the fridge. I like to put some plastic wrap on it. This rest time also is actually allowing our meat to marinate and all those seasonings. So then your dumplings will become more flavorful. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the fridge. I have cut down my cabbage to a much more manageable size. I'm pretty much just gonna cut it into tinier pieces. This step to me is probably the most time consuming because there's a lot of cabbage. The way we do it, the vegetable and meat ratio is almost exactly the same. 
This is kind of what we're looking at. It's like very crumbly. Cabbage has now been washed. I've also tried to kind of wring out most of the water. Now I can combine it with our pork from earlier. This is why we kind of need a big bowl. We really like our vegetables in this family. Like I told my mom, I feel like this was her way of tricking us into eating a lot of greens. With that being said, this ratio is actually really good. I feel like because there's so much vegetable, you kind of don't get like the meat sweats at all. You just keep eating these. That's why I think like both my brother and I, we can eat like 20 of these in one sitting. He probably can't eat more, but I'm just saying it's healthy, right? So. <laughs> oh, this smells like, you just know this is it. So great going to cover it up again. Also, did you realize that once we put the cabbage in, it literally like doubled in volume or maybe even tripled. So you can make a lot more dumplings with this than you originally thought so. So now let's talk dough. Dumpling dough takes a little more time, especially when I'm trying to make like a hundred dumplings in one sitting. So usually I just like to buy dumpling wrappers. It already comes in like little circular sheets. And also because these are made using machines, they're usually very uniform in size and they're a lot thinner than I think what you would be able to get. Like if you made it completely from scratch. The one that you make at home is going to be a little thicker and it is going to have that QQ texture we love so much. I will also kind of just show you guys what it's like to make your own dumpling wrappers. I've already made my base dough. Ta-da! It is fairly straightforward and I'm going to put all the instructions in the description box below. This has been resting for an hour, so that's why I made it beforehand. Sprinkle some flour on my board because it's been resting for so long. It is now very, very soft, but basically we're just going to roll this out. My grandpa, who is obviously the true OG, he would make fresh dumpling wrappers every single time. Cut it like so. Our end goal, right, is to get that like circular shape. Grandpa always used to do these like triangular shapes, so turning it 90 degrees. Once we have a shape like this, he just presses it down so you form like, like a flat disc. And once you have all of these, we're just going to roll them out. Every time after I roll it, I turn it, and you almost want to leave the center slightly thicker. I'm mainly rolling the edges here. It is definitely nowhere as perfect as the one from just now, right? If you want to make your own dumpling wrapper, definitely start a little bit earlier. It's getting close to dinner time, so I might actually stop here and start making some dumplings. So now it is time to wrap things up. We have our filling dumpling wrappers, as well as the ones I made. What you also need though, especially with these machine-made dumpling wrappers because they're slightly drier. You need some water, which will actually put a little bit of flour in. To help our dumpling seal, dust your board with some flour, and then we're ready to go. Grab a piece of dumpling wrapper. I'm gonna get some filling and just put that right in the middle. Get a little bit of that water we made earlier and just draw a circle around the wrapper like that. You're gonna pinch these sides together, just the two edges, right? So you get this, but we're going to actually fold and pleat it like so, pushing the dough up and then pinching it tight. You see how it's like pleated over here now? Kind of around my finger, push it, make sure everything's in there, seal it in, pinch it tight, and a dumpling! Look at it, isn't it cute? So that is our first little dumpling baby. Here's one of the ones that I actually made. It's freshly made, so it's not as dry. You don't even need water. It is so much more pliable that actually if you just pinch it tight like this, it's already going to be perfectly sealed. Especially when you start, putting it on the table will help you. Don't be afraid to just use the table to your advantage. Get that, pushing it in. Pushing it in. That's how you make more uniform dumplings. So this step is definitely trickier and it is one of those things that I think comes with practice, but hopefully those little tips there makes it a little simpler. My mom can make so many of these in an hour. Hopefully one day I will be at master level, which to me is really just mom level. But usually at this point, it's when I would just play some music, play like a movie. We're just gonna keep doing this until we have enough dumplings.
All right, it's been some time and here are the dumplings I have. Oh my God, I need to stop doing that. I have made 24 dumplings, so I still have a good bit of filling left as you can see. This recipe can definitely fill you up. The color is actually slightly different. This one has more of a yellowish tinge. I guess it's also a lot softer. The machine made one is definitely drier now and harder. So I'm gonna go ahead and boil these ones and then we're gonna pan fry this. So in my pan here, I'm gonna add some oil. Once this is hot enough, we're gonna add in our dumplings. We're just gonna let it pan fry for a little bit until you see like a golden brown color underneath. Sounds so good. So you see this color? We're getting quite a bit of color on here, which is great. So we're gonna add in some water. This is just to help it steam. And cover it up with a lid. So this step is pretty much to just let it steam and cook through. What I'm making is called guo tie. It's like pan fried dumplings. I really enjoy having it this way. I feel like I can eat so much more of this version than the boiled dumplings, even though I love both. All right, the water is almost gone here. The dumplings have really expanded. So now we're gonna add this flour water mixture. This is going to help us create that beautiful layer at the bottom. <gasps> All right, it's looking good. Oh, it's a beautiful color. Oh my god, I'm so excited! The idea is... Hold on. Oh, I'm salivating again. I need to cover this up. And flip. You guys... What did I tell you? Look at this color! Wow, it looks so good. Before I tuck it, and I'm so tempted, I am just gonna make a quick sauce and I'll show you guys how to do it. Basically all it is, is some garlic, a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of vinegar, some cilantro. You can also add chili oil if you want, which is what we generally do, but just this alone smells so good and it goes with the dumplings so well. So without further ado, let me just steal a bite here. Cheers everybody. The soup juices are like oozing out. I was wanted to show you guys the center and I totally forgot to do that because I ate it so fast. There's like that slight crisp outside because it's had time to like steam. It's so juicy. Let me show you guys the boiled ones. The skin is definitely thicker. Mm. The boiled ones have that like QQ texture I was talking about. This is what the dumpling looks like on the inside. There's a good bite of meat in there. Mm. I'm gonna have such a good dinner tonight. Oh, this is so good. Seriously, you guys, if there's one recipe of mine that you should try to make at home, this is it. It has never disappointed me in any way. Dumplings are just so great. Anyways, I am so excited to finish the rest of this. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>